Scream it away, scream it away. When you find it, scream it away. What do you think that thing was? I'm so glad that it left. What do you think that thing was? I'm just la glad it left when we screamed. Scream it away, scream it away. It helps most everything. When your papa visits you, just scream him away. When your children visit you, scream them away. And when it's late at night and you cannot get to sleep and the ghosts of your wrongs come to visit you, why now you know just what to do? Scream, yes, scream them away Because you do not want to do the work You do not want to see When they come, yes, come for you Just scream, scream, scream Scream them all away. If you don't, if you don't, they might talk of things best not heard. If you don't, oh, if you don't, why your brain will hurt and it will be absurd. Scream them away. Keep those emotions at bay. Scream it away. You don't want to feel that way, oh no. Scream it, scream it away. Keep those emotions at bay. Scream it. Scream it away so that you can see your day. If you don't scream it away, what do you think might happen? They'll talk, yes, talk to you, and what? Will you see? You might find out that you've done something, something wrong. Then you might have to apologize, apologize. And so you want to scream, you want to make them go away but you don't have to you see you can learn to accept that we're all human and we regret you can forgive yourself for the wrongs that you have done you can love yourself and love everyone. But if you do not love yourself, then it can be so hard to see. If you do not love yourself, you might just want to scream. But you don't have to scream. You don't have to make them run away. You don't have to scream. 
You can learn to accept what's here. You can learn to accept what's happened. You can learn to accept what's here. So you can make better choices. You can do something better than what you have done. For if you just want to avoid, avoid, then you have no way to move forward. And you scream and run and scream and run until you are done. But you don't have to scream and run. You can get through this too. So I hope you do stick around and do try to do something other than to scream and run. To do something other than to scream until you're done. When I was young, I was scared of so many things. As I grew older, some of those things seemed silly. And now you know some things they might still scare me and yes you know some things i feared should be feared i'm not going to immolate myself i'm still scared of that so i don't play with fire i don't go where it's at some things you should fear and others not so much don't fear your feelings just feel them till you're done go through them till you're done some people Fear, heartache, and heartbreak. But you can get better at that. With practice and experience, while it might still hurt, you can get better much, much faster. So look and just go and experience what you can embrace your feelings. You only have them for a while. Embrace what you feel and feel it fearlessly. It won't hurt you if you know how to feel practice your feelings and get familiar with how to feel so many things and then you won't fear your feelings you can get better just keep going through keep going through keep moving through i know that sometimes you might be scared of bears, 
Remember that when it comes to grizzly bears, if they're in your town, there's one thing you can do. Scream them away, yes, scream until they're through. They don't like your screaming, and they don't like the noise. Don't run from them, because they might follow you. Make them run away, make them choose a different way. Make them run away, and they will be through with you. When you run into a bear, just scream them away. But only when they're in town, because what I say is, if you're in their neighborhood, you should just stay away. It's their neighborhood, and it might look like a forest or a park. It's their neighborhood, and if you see them, just go away. But those good bears, they might want to smell you. They've got really, really good noses. They can smell for miles. So when you go to parks, remember what they say. Put your food away, way up in trees be. Cause if it's in your car, the bears might break, break in. They don't care if they need to smash your window to break in. And if you don't want that, why, if you don't want that, tie your food all up and stick it in a tree. Keep that food far away, far away from the bears. I know you like bears, that I can see. Some people have bears, nice and cuddly. Stuffed teddy bears, stuffed teddy bears, they can be really good company. Stuffed teddy bears, stuffed teddy bears, they can be oh so cozy. But you know that not all kids like the teddy bears, but you know, sometimes kids, they think they are square, they want something cooler, something that might sting, they might want a beehive, or maybe a scorpion, they might want a bumblebee to bumble along the ground. They might want a field of flowers that is in the town where they can go and play with one of their stuffed things. They might want to go there and pick some flowers for me but we don't have that around here at least not that i see so they just go into their rooms and color pictures of the sea when they include lovely fish and sometimes crabs oh yes 
They like to include a lovely fish and perhaps a lovely nest because they love spiders. Yes, that's what I see. They love spiders. Even spiders in the sea. Oh, even spiders that live deep deep in the sea but you know that they have said the fear of spiders originates from crabs crawling in the ground tiny crabs smaller that you cannot see these tiny crabs can climb under the skin of you and me and so we have a natural fear of the crabs, yes sir -y. And that translates to spiders. And that is what I think. And so I will go and draw spiders in the sea. And I'll pick the pictures on my wall for all to see for you and me pictures on the wall sometimes tell a story Pictures on the wall sometimes tell so much that picture there has a mouth that picture has some eyes that picture shows a house and that one shows my thighs I don't know why there on that picture and I don't know why they have that strange discolored shape like a hat drawn on my thighs on that picture on the wall that strange hat reminds me of one I owned that strange hat reminds me of something I owned it was long ago and the children they never saw it why did they draw it and why on my thigh and I still don't know why they drew my thigh it's not something that I thought they draw they still they just drew my thigh but say it looks like my eye and that might be my elbow I don't know what to say it's like strange body parts are having a party today but that happens in the pictures on my wall and that does not explain that hat no not at all because that hat i had it so very long ago and that hat it had so many stories that you know i forgot those stories when i lost that hat oh no but the children they tell stories stories of far away and I think they might be getting stories from my hat.
Sometimes hats might have spirits. Sometimes cars might too. I think that hat is psychic and it might talk to you. Some people think you need a brain to have a spirit. I think that's really insane because I think it does not work that way. I think spirits are implicit in being a rock has a spirit as does a brain when it's removed from a dead body and weighed at the morgue that brain is not part of the person but a spirit it still has i know that might make me strange but that is what I say, I think everything has a spirit in its own way. I don't think consciousness really implies a spirit at all. I don't think consciousness is that big of a deal at all. And if it were what would you think of the evidence around us of other mammals or animals showing signs of consciousness and we've eaten them oh yes sometimes to the brink of destiny and we've eaten them oh yes being blind to what we see for they all have spirits just like you and me and the fruit and vegetables we eat they have spirits true we all have spirits, and we live in a big spirit zoo. I am singing a song about something I ate long ago. It was a stew, stew, lovely stew that I know. It was a lovely stew I ate long ago. Have you had a lovely stew, a lovely dish prepared? Perhaps with something crunchy on the side. It doesn't need to be bread. It could be gluten-free and still good for you and me. But it, something nice and crunchy would go well with the stew. Something nice and crunchy would help me to power through and finish the big bowl of stew. And that stew I ate so long ago was really yummy you know you know it 
had an umami taste and it was so yummy. I helped it out by adding some honey. That's stew, that's stew. I loved that stew. We ate it, the three of us, until we were through. And then that day, we all gathered round and worked in the pot so we would see what could be found. And in the bottom of that lovely pot at the heart of the stew, I found, I found something new. I don't know where it came from, but it was somehow blue, that thing I found at the heart of the stew. We passed it round, and it could be found that it smelled fragrant like our stew. I sometimes sing songs about biscuits and cookies. Have you ever had a song about pickle cookies? Have you ever had a song about some pickled cookies? Not pickling cookies, but cookies made of pickles. I don't want to pickle cookies. That's not how I preserve them, but pickles in my cookies. That sounds really strange, but it might be the thing to open parts of my brain. If I ate these cookies, what would I say? Would I sing? better songs? Would I have a better day? I don't know, but I want to try. That's what I say. So I'll make some pickled cookies and I'll try them someday. And these cookies and these pickles combine, combine like some lovely cheese and some very fine wine and they will explode explode deep in my mind and i'll think some newer thoughts that will be just fine and i'll sp think some newer thoughts it might be sublime sublime the cookies and the pickles combine, combine, and they might blow up my mind, my mind. Will you try them with me, with me tonight? Will you try them with me? They might be out of sight. The pickle cookies, the pickle cookies, will you try them with me, with me, with me? Because I think they'll be really good, you see. People don't 
always want their mind blown. I don't really know why, oh no, people don't always want their mind blown. Some of them want to keep their minds, I don't know why. They keep their minds in a box where they know all the corners. They keep their minds in a box where they're well understood. But I want to explode my mind. I just want to explode it and see newer things than ever before and experience some newer things that I have never known. So I don't keep my mind in a box. Oh no, no. Because if I did, it would be on the floor, exploded into pieces again and again. And then the pieces wouldn't be a box anymore. How do you do when you have no box for your mind? Do you keep it in a jar or in your behind, in the closet back behind you? That's what I'm asking today. If your box is blown to pieces, where do you store your mind? I think I might store my mind somewhere that it can expand. I think I might store my mind in the entire universe. Exploding minds, exploding minds, and so much space to roam. Exploding minds, exploding minds, until I make it home. My home is the universe. That is what I say, and my mind can occupy all of it today because it's exploded out, out, far, far away because I like to explode my mind. That is what I say because I like to explode my mind in every, every way. If you're a part of the universe, why do you think you're an individual? If you're a part of your family, whose will do you obey? Do you follow your own will? Do you Follow your families. Do you follow the world's will? Whose will will it be? I like my mind and my will. It is true. I make my own decisions until I am through, but I listen, I listen, and sometimes change my mind. I listen, I listen, and sometimes I comply, because you know I'm all right. I sometimes comply. When things might be out of sight, I like to live in this world just right. And I need certain things like sometimes some money. I need some food to put in my belly and if I go somewhere 
I need transportation. I know I could think of places deep in my mind, but I live here, I live here, and I want to go places too. I want to visit people and not just my mind. I think my mind likes to visit people, visit my friends, and I like to manifest all the ways until my end. I make some money, I make some, it's true, and I use it, I use it to explore what I'll do. I use it, I use it, for my will that is true. When you're out of ideas for your next song, there's one thing you can do, and it doesn't take long. Just open your mouth and sing the next song, and you don't have to worry about not having a clue. You don't have to worry, just Sing until you're through. Just open up and sing a new song. If you sing it right, it won't be too long. Just sing a song until you are through. You could make it about beavers or maybe your shoes. You could make it about having eyes, maybe eyes that are blue. It could be about anything, anything. It's true. And just sing that song, sing that song until you're through. Yes, just sing that song and you'll have another. It's true. And that is what I do when I don't know what to sing. I just sing the next song and see what will bring forth from my mouth when I open up and sing. I don't know what comes out. I'm exploring everything. I just open up and sing and see what tumbles out. I just open up and sing and sometimes it's a house. I sing about houses, sometimes blue or red. Sometimes I sing about things I put on my head. I don't know what this one might be about, no, not yet. I don't know what the next one will be about as well. But it doesn't matter because I'm still singing and I'll find out someday when this song is over. When will this song be over. Houses are sometimes blue or red. Those are the colors of the houses in my head. There might be other colors but that's what I said. They're only blue or red today. Sometimes I think of something like a book 
or a handshake. Sometimes I think about books with special handshakes, some really complex handshakes. That is what I say. Some really complex handshakes. And that is why I say I'm not cool enough for that handshake. No way. I'm not cool enough for that handshake. And so it's just in a book. But books can contain things other than handshakes. Some of them contain recipes for milkshakes. Some milkshakes are super duper yummy. Some milkshakes make my butt a little runny. I don't eat those milkshakes, no way. But I love chocolate milkshakes any day. I love chocolate milkshakes in every way. Except I don't love when they are poured on my head and I don't want to breathe them not with my nostrils or with my mouth and especially not at both times I want to breathe some air and not milkshakes for my mind if I breathed a milkshake would my mind really mind or would it be thinking of the milkshake and how it was so fine but I want to taste that milkshake and not just while I die so I'll breathe the air while I'm eating that Sprite. I'm intolerant of being forced to breathe milkshakes. I won't let you do it, that's what I say. I'm intolerant of other things, that is something we agree on. I'm intolerant of clothing forced over my frame. I have my own choices. I have my own decisions, and one of the things I decide is what I will wear, and I think you should let other people make that decision, even if it's something you don't like or would not wear. It could be a cool hat or maybe something like a wrap or maybe a burka maybe burkas where it's at but you shouldn't force people to wear things you shouldn't force people to not wear things as well because we have our own choices and even if you don't think they're well, we make our own decisions. Sometimes they might be wrong, and I really hate that shirt you're wearing, and I hate your hat, but they're your decisions, decisions, and I respect that your decisions are not mine, and I'm not going to smack that hat off your head. Please let these good people wear what they want. And if you don't like it, just go on home. If you don't like what they're wearing, it's none of your business because you're not wearing it and you should not care
because you're not wearing it. Maybe it's because you're square and the clothing that you don't like won't fit on cube bodies.